Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's cryptocurrencies update for Friday, June the 30th, 2023. The half of 2023 is over. So let's have a look at the second half. Is it going to be as good or as bad as we've had before? Uh, for some, it will be good. For most, it will be good. We have a little bit of mixed messages here. So that's why I have to sign up. Do not enter entrance only because some look good. Some don't look so good. And we have to figure out which ones we like to dabble in. I prefer the Bitcoins and the Ethereums, uh, plenty of liquid. And uh, those are the two 800 pound gorillas in the room one should focus on. One should also and always focus on the importance of stop losses because without a stop loss, uh, you can quickly lose your shirt and a lot of other things as well, uh, besides money, uh, your personal uh, financial and emotional well-being can be lost with significant drawdowns as well. A stop loss prevents you from losing all that. A stop loss allows you to sleep well at night. A stop loss allows you to not have to follow every single tick. And a stop loss makes sure that you protect your hard-earned money. Uh, trading without it, you don't necessarily have to put one in place if you don't want to, if you're afraid to get stopped up, but there's a certain level below which you say, I'm out. Because trading is nothing but risk management. Risk management, risk management, risk management. The upside will take care of itself, and zero is the bottom, and that's not where we want to go. So I have no summary slide for today, as um, I want to point out just the quite few obvious things. First is Cardano, it's still not above 29 cents. We had a very nice spike higher here today, but still no close above it. So don't have to bother about it yet. Avalanche is trying with that 1345 level and a 50 day simple moving average. No close above it. So we don't have to bother about it until then. Very simple. Binance coin. Let's have a little bit more of a zoomed outlook on Binance coin. Okay, I'm going to actually zoom in. Well, first of all, you can see here how range bound this one has been over the last year. Anywhere between 200 and 350 and even more narrowed down. As you can see, these are the blocks that Binance coin has been trading in. Uh, we've lost here support at 255, I believe it is, 252, 255. And now I think we're on our way to the low 200s. Today doesn't mean anything. As you can see here, resistance needs to be broken. Then we get back above the 50 day, the 200 day eventually need to get above the clouds. Because remember, if we're below the Ichimoku cloud, most of the time, bad things happen. When we're above it, most of the time, uh, good things happen. So let's see if we zoom in a little bit more because I want to get rid of this spike here, this erroneous price print. And not yet. I need to zoom in a little bit more to give us one more. There we go. Six. There. There we go. So now you can see here better the setup we're in. We're below the 200 day moving average. We're below the 50 day. We're below the 10. All those unfortunate bad things. As you can see, these are all red arrows, right? It's all red arrows. We want to see green arrows. Red arrows means from a traffic light perspective, no go. We want to be above the Ichimoku cloud. We don't want to be below it. So also this one is for me, also as an analyst, a no go. So prove it otherwise. So here is Bitcoin. Bitcoin had quite the wild ride today. I'm going to scroll a little bit lower because here I'm going to add in the Ichimoku cloud for you and you can see the difference. See, Bitcoin is now back above the Ichimoku cloud. It's green. You see here this little green tail. See here, above green, good. Above the 50 day, above the 200 day, good. So this is where we should focus on. Here the chances of good things happening are much better than here. Here the chances of good things happening are Nil, so almost. This is much better. So I still think we're correcting. Correction could be over. Uh, if I would look at Ethereum, it's really starts to suggest this correction is already over. But I can't be certain yet. We need to see new uptrend highs break above thirty-one and a half thousand, and then this wave three C is underway. I'm going to add one more technical indicator here: the Bollinger Bands. And as you can see here, we're at the upper end of the Bollinger Bands. 
For a little while here, we were riding outside the upper bollage event, just like we're doing here. Then you get a move back inside, move back inside, and then continuation. I think we are somewhere along these lines. I still think we can move higher on Bitcoin. We drop below today's low. We can target anywhere between 27 and a half, 29 and a half, if of course the support so. So a retest of the 50 day simple moving average, even of the 20 day moving average would be quite normal. Remember we did five waves up, one, two, three, four, and five. Three reached the target zone, four reached the target zone, five almost, two was quite shallow. But this is a strong uptrend after five waves up, expect three waves low. Three waves lower can be in many forms and shapes and conditions, so to say. It can be a simple zigzag, it can be a flat, it can be a triangle, it can be a double zigzag, it can be a double flat, double, triple triangle, whatever it wants to do. Oh, actually, sorry, second waves cannot be triangles. So then we're stuck with this type of corrective price action, a double type of correction as well. So we haven't cleared um, the grass field just yet in the sense that we haven't broken higher. But we go back above 31,500. I think we have a very good chance that the low is in place. So that is now our bull line in the sand. Put it there, put it there, Just put this one here. All right, we get above it. We are good to go. So the red path is of course not bad, it's simply to align it with the red waves. Take this one away. Floor remains, of course, here at the early June lows. Support remains here between 28 and a half and 29 and a half. Okay, we have to drop below support to even start to consider that we might go lower. Until then, this still looks pretty strong. How are we doing on GBTC? This GBTC is still in a nice uptrend, and I think we're somewhere here. You see here, we're at one, two, three, four, as you can see here. And we have probably some sort of fourth wave. We're holding support here at 1850, loud and clear. We broke below it. This morning looked pretty scary, down eight, nine, 10%. Ripped right back up. Wave count on GBTC is slightly different than that on Bitcoin, but eventually they will align. Don't worry about it. So I still think we're somewhere also here, like in January 2023, here in uh, June 2023. May 2023, June 2023. So I still think there's more upside left in GBTC. We'll have to break, um, I would say, below 17 and a half. Let's raise that support level here to about 17 and a half as well. Right there. Okay, that is now support. So we have plenty of support levels. All right, there, that is, of course. Also support. What does that mean? That if we drop below 18 and a half, we'll visit 17 and a half. We can drop below that, 1675, etc. And this is all on closing basis. These intraday stabs don't count. How we're doing on Ethereum? Uh, that one is dropped right here in the ideal wave to be target zone. Support here, 1775, 1800. And also here, if we're gonna add the Bollinger Bands, okay, we're gonna add the Ichimoku Cloud to this. You can see that it's trying to break above the Ichimoku Cloud. It's not as good yet as Bitcoin. It has a little bit more work to do, but we did five waves up, alternatively only four, and now at five. But look at the Bollinger Band, it is starting to expand. We can break above today's high on closing basis. I think this way five C, is all but confirmed, and I'll be looking higher to the 23 to 27,000 level. Okay, I like the bullishness on the indicators. Money is flowing in. MACD is on a buy. The 50 day is holding. We're above the 20 day, we're above the 200 day. So, all we now need to do is break above this Ichimoku cloud. But you can see the Ichimoku cloud is already turning green. So, this is good as well. So, the wave count still looks good. How we're doing on ETHE, ETHE could have bottomed here for this wave two, right here in the ideal wave two target zone. Okay, that was what we had. So this is what we're gonna work with. As long as today's slow holds, I think we can move higher. So we did a little bit more than a 
38.2% retrace, right? In that 38.2 to 50%. So technically we've done enough. If the low holds, I think we can then target, as you can see, something like this. We do the three, the four, and the five. So we're there, right here, this ideal target zone, close to the CSA relationship, all those good things. So I still remain relatively bullish on ETHE as well. I have to break below the floor, which again is this June low. That is, of course, now the floor, same as for underlying the Ethereum. But resistance remains here, as you can see, at about $11. So we have to get above $11. Okay, that is resistance. Until then, this can still go sideways. But we like it in the sense that we're above the Ichimoku cloud, above the 10, above the 20, above the uh, 50. Yeah, do I have the 50 here as well? Yes, I have a bidder for the 50 and the 200 day. So technically, this is a strong chart. And so far, the gobbling up of this 10, 12% intraday drop is bullish. Now, this one is starting to improve as well. Link is back above the floor. Okay, we have reached the low fives. So technically, this way five for five can be complete. And I would count this as then a wave one, something like this. A wave two, something like this. So as you can see, we're reclaiming some of these important moving averages, but we're below the cloud, below the 200 day, and still below the mid level. But it's starting to look better. So as long as we can hold the June lows, we might be on our way to new uptrend highs. But I need to see it confirm, of course, from a technical perspective as well, by, by breaking higher. So then this would then be five. A retrace that holds the June low, five, would be highly appreciated. Like this. Something to probably around support level. And then from there, move higher. That's kind of the path we're looking for. Alternatively, we'll move continuously higher, but we need to get above $6.60. And of course, the 200 day moving average is right there at the HMO. Until then, cautiously optimistic. How we're doing on Polygon? Polygon has not even broken above the 74 cents level. It's below the 50 day moving average. It's below the 200 day moving average. Yes, the technical indicators are improving. So it's definitely on the watch, but I want to get it confirmed as well, right? We want to see this go here, like we saw here. This is where good things happen. Good things happen. Okay. So it's still a little bit early days. Started to look good from a technical indicator perspective. That's for sure. But uh, positive divergence is only divergence, so it's not. It's a condition, not a trigger. Triggers are price. Level. Price pays and nothing else. Opinions don't pay. Um, technical indicators don't pay. Simple move averages don't pay. The whole of chart needs, of course, to improve. So far, we're not seeing it. So it's better to trade 80, 90% of a uptrend well and bottom fishing and be wrong. Now, here's one that the deserves our attention in Solana. Solana broke here above 1860. That was our cutoff. So Solana is improving, it's struggling with the 200 day. So we might have completed this larger correction. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. And that was it. Then we have to recount it as in such a way. Remember, Elliott Wave is an interpretation of the price action. And when the price action changes, we change accordingly. And then this was three and then that. That should then complete all of it. Mora keeps trying to push higher, better into this ideal wave one target zone. It's getting messy and overlapping. The current rally since the green wave four low looks better as a ending diagonal, in my humble opinion. Okay, so we've reached our target zone, 14 and a half to 15 and a half. We broke higher, so we've reached it. You know, mission accomplished. We've gotten there. Okay, mission accomplished. Very nice, but this starts to look more like an ending diagonal. 
which you can clearly see here. It can always go a little bit higher, but it is uh, a little bit tricky in the sense that, okay, ending diagonals can terminate quick. But for now, I have no signs that the upside is done. We can easily go to 15 and a half still, right? To this green, uh, uh, blue target uh, line here, trend line, sorry, blue trend line which will be the upper end of the target zone. So trend line target zone, sorry, <laughs> a lot of confusing terms. How are we doing on Riot? Well, as I said, Riot needs to break above resistance, right? That would be ideally 13 and a half with the first warning for the bulls already, a uh, bears above 12 and a half. That's what Riot needs to do. Until then, caution is still a bit advised. We are now above the 50 day, the 20 day, the 10 day, all those good things are good above the 200 day, above the Ichimoku cloud. So that is good. The class is now 80% full. Now we need to see it above resistance. We get above resistance, then I'll be looking into the 15 plus price level, potentially as high as 16, maybe even 18. But then we're looking for three, four, and five. Price section over the last one, two, three, four, five days is a little bit uh, nauseating overlapping. Could be a leading diagonal one and then a two to be determined, but we're gonna stick with these price levels. As I said, price base and nothing else, but the setup is improving slowly, but surely it's improving. We drop, of course, below this green wave too low, and especially below support, $10, something else is going on. So we have our cutoff levels. The floor is ultimately here at the June low, like most other um, tickers and cryptocurrencies we just covered. June low remains the floor, and I'll add it to the chart uh, as well. That remains the floor, the line in the sand, meaning as long as we stay above it, we can allow for higher block prices. And this still looks all that good, but we need to get above resistance. And that's all I have for today, short, sweet, and simple. Please remember there will be no update on Monday and Tuesday. Uh, I'll be closed for those two days in observance of Independence Day, which is on Tuesday. Monday, I'll just take a brief break to reset, recharge, and get back uh, fresh and full of energy next Wednesday. Take care, trade safe, and I'll see you all on Wednesday. All the best. Bye.